my neighbors. Uh, I'm going to me when I moved into my neighborhood what kind of neighborhood I was moving into. And it's not the whole neighborhood, it's, it's, a, it's a small group, however. <coughs> uh, for example, my son-in-law, uh, his truck was shot, brand new truck shot with BBs. Uh, I was fortunate enough at that time to have Sergeant Pittman, which happens to be his son, come out and handle it. Um, very quickly, uh, nothing could be done about it because we couldn't prove anything. Okay, say la vie, it's a done deal. Uh, last week, this is my this is my issue. I come home and the neighbors are sitting out there, got their weed wrapped up in their cigarette wrapper, watching for the police to come smoke it in the cigarettes. I call again. I have called and left a message for a narcotics officer. I'm not going to mention any names. I couldn't even pronounce his name anyway. I have yet to get a call back. Uh, I've taken pictures. I've done what I can that I'm allowed to do and no phone call. If they continue to do it, we've called for the noise up until 3 o'clock in the morning. Of course, everybody runs when they see the police. They hide in a little cemetery. So I'm, I'm a little upset about this. I can't take my grandson outside. My kids won't take him outside. So I'm, I'm a little annoyed at no response whatsoever okay. at what's going on, and it just continues. Okay. Um, well, for those, for those activities that are in progress that you just described, that would be something in progress. I wouldn't necessarily place the phone call to the narcotics detective. That that phone call, if it had have gone to the, the emergency communication center, they would have dispatched the deputy immediately and they can take, you know, there's many things that they can do as far as getting the call to a uniform officer. It doesn't have to go over the radio. They can dispatch it via phone so that if whoever is listening or watching, you know, they can send a covert vehicle in. There's street crimes units on duty. I don't know what time of day this was, but I take it it was in the evening hours. Uh, we. Right, that, and the communication staff quite likely would have directed that to a street crimes unit, which is totally covert blue jeans, t-shirt, and a scruffy beard, and uh, you know they, they roll up in there and, and, and they're on top of them before they ever realize that it's the sheriff's office. So I think some of the problem was the, the phone call probably wound up on somebody's voicemail that wasn't answered until the next day. And, and again, I can't stress, you know, that's, a, that's an immediate situation. It's ongoing activity, and that needs to go to the 911 center. I'm not suggesting the 911 line, the administrative line, but tell them as much, give them as much information as possible. They will ask you a lot of questions. If we need to come in in a covert vehicle, offer that information, uh, and, and, and we will do our best to get there in a timely fashion and take appropriate enforcement action. But again, for it to have just fell on a voicemail, that's, that's kind of difficult for us to deal with. Okay, I understand that. Well, that leads me to my next question. Uh, how many times do you have to call before something is actually done, whether it's the drugs, the noise, uh, how many of them are out there, what they're doing before somebody can do something either with the property management, your homeowners association. I know you just can't go in there and boot somebody out of their house, but when you call, I mean, is there like a statute of limitations on how many times the police can come to your house for illegal activity? Well, that, that's a civil process. Uh, it's, it's called a nuisance uh, residence, and, and the county does pursue those from time to time, but we first have to build a little bit of a criminal history or a criminal file on the particular address. And that comes from just good street level enforcement. Might get four or five reports generated. I got Joe Schmo with marijuana. I got, you know, Priscilla Barnes with methamphetamine. Then I got somebody else with this. So once we have a history with an address and frequent calls leading to frequent criminal activity resulting in arrests, then we can ask the Commonwealth Attorney to pursue nuisance charges against the particular residents, which is a, a civil situation, but uh, they can actually shut the residents down if, uh, if, if the charges or businesses or, or you know, whatever the problem may be. Uh, the, the, the Code of Virginia gives them that latitude to go in and, and take enforcement activity. Um, another thing that I would encourage, uh, I don't know what community it is, but if they don't have a neighborhood watch program, that's always a good, uh, a really good solution to uh, enable the community members themselves to, to gather a lot of information and relay it to us through our crime prevention unit. Uh, and then we react. The idea you can get folks out there, but a lot of them are even afraid to go out there. Right now, I'm neighborhood watch, yep. and I'm getting a little. And, and I respect that. So I think probably the best thing for you to do is just 
if it means a phone call to the sheriff's office every night because there's activity out there, then that's what I'm encouraging you to do is call us every night and, and go through that communication center via the administrative lines and, uh, and, and let the officers come out. And if there is enforcement activity that they can conduct, then I'm sure, I assure you they'll take action. Okay, and is it okay that they let you know, hey, we're doing something about it so you're not left in the dark and think nothing's going on? Uh, you mean as far as the officers that respond? Right. I mean, do you know? I mean, because otherwise, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you know, if he comes in here with his Harley Davidson jacket, I'm not going to think he's a police officer. You know, I'll be like, oh, okay. It's, you know, here's Joe Schmo down the street. We're not going to know anything's going on it because it progressively continues. You, you you can remain anonymous in your complaints, and if you if you desire to know some follow up information within the laws of confidentiality, you can request through the communication center to have the officer or officers contact you via telephone when they've cleared the scene and they can tell you, we did this, we saw that, we're gonna to react to it this way, uh, there was nothing going on when we arrived, whatever the case may be. They'll, they'll be glad to follow up with you and, and let you know, again, within the confines of the law, what they did.